Okay, folks, uh, thanks again for checking in. It's kind of fun. As long as I got the time for it, I'll be answering questions. Uh, got a man that wanted to know how you get the brace out of the right jaw, which is what I told you this mare had. She's got about seven braces in her, and the uh, first thing you got to know is that we do this in the round curl because of the simplicity of filming and the view. But all this stuff is getting fixed outside. Now, I do have a disciplined ride whenever I need something specific, which is what I'm about to do, but 90% of it's done outside. And on a three-hour circle, I spend about 10 minutes training. The rest of the time, we're covering country. And uh, a brace, to me, is that a horse makes that choice to brace. So if you can just ride them outside and get them moving, and don't betray them and be a fair leader, then the braces kind of melt away and then you're just dealing with a habit. So a habit can be broken. And uh, I've gained on this mare since, uh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. She's starting to figure out that it's not such a bad world. So I'm gonna show you the exercise now that has to do with the brace. The reason I ride in the halter is because it's a more subtle way of helping the horse understand what it is I want. I don't have to pull on the mouse so much. So now the rope goes above the knot, overhand knot, and tighten the knot down. Now just slide the knot, and you got a hackamore. I've cut out one of the strands in this halter because I've got more pressure that way. I keep the nose band below the bone and on the cartilage to start off. Later on, I'll move it up because I'm gonna find out which is the best geometrical angle to help the jaws. That's why you get creative with a halter. That's untracking. They don't cross their hind legs, then keep walking. Now I'm going to start walking, I'll do it to the right. This is the side that the most brace in it. Like all of them, this is a very simple exercise. The word simple is important because you want black and white. Horses get that. So there is no left rein. You do the math so you can bump and release. Outside leg is impulsion, keeping the horse moving. Inside leg is pushing the rib out. That's why I don't believe in standing still and bringing a horse's back, horse's head to your stirrup 500 times. I don't believe in it. Get him moving. There. Now, for those of you that are notice things, when I bump, there, this horse, this jaw isn't as braced as it used to be. So to answer your question, this is my answer. Bump, release. Inside leg, rib cage. Outside leg, impulsion if you need it. Left rein, nothing. Left foot, nothing until the horse stops. Change directions. Drop the rein to the inside. Walk a circle. This is all in the elbow, incidentally. You don't bend your wrist. You just bump with your elbow and give it back. Bump, release. Okay, so now you got a horse that just flat out says, hell no. So you take your hand, you're in a halter, and you place your hand here. Now, you're not gonna do bump and release. You're just gonna hold your hand there. And it's up for the horse to work it out. So as soon as they give to your hand, 
then you release. That's another way of talking to a horse. And once again, I don't sit here and bring the head all the way around, all the way around, all the way around. I'd rather get moving and get a horse working. Now, I have to throw in a quick story about ropes. For those of people that are beginners, and the question was what kind, how long, who, whatever. Okay, 5 16 nylon, king ropes, Sheridan, Wyoming. 5 16 nylon, soft. Not extra soft, not triple X, none of that. No knot in one end. You don't want a knot on the end of your rope. It's very dangerous. I'll give you a short example. You rope a horse or rope something and you hook your loop over a post. The critter's going to keep going and the rope's going to stay around the post and the rope's going to slide through it. When it comes to the knot, it's going to give a hell of a jerk. If there is no knot, it just slips right out and you haven't hurt anything. When you're dallying, if you've got a knot on the end of your rope, then things fall apart and that rope's flying around the horn at 60 miles an hour. When it slaps you in the belly, it hurts worse than without a knot. So that's why you don't have a knot on the end. I use the Rawhide Hondas and uh, get them out from my partner in Mexico. And as we speak, we've got, I think, eight of them. There's a really hard to come by because all this stuff that's handmade, if you'll notice, there's fewer people making them. A little trivia. In Sonora, where these are braided, there's the, the penitentiary, which is in Hermosillo. And there's guys that are in there for life, and there's guys that are in there for petty theft. The braiders, you want to get the guy that's in for life to braid your hondu. Because he ain't going anywhere, and he'll take his time. The guy with petty theft's going to get too big a hurry. So we only get murder hondus. Just thought I'd share that with you. Now, the second safety thing I wanted to tell you about was gloves. Okay, roping and gloves. We've all seen uh, team ropers for years, they rope with a glove on, one glove. Well, for years, I just took it for granted that was a tribute to Michael Jackson, which I think is commendable. But if you rope with a glove, the advantage of it is when you do cut your finger off, you just carry the glove to the hospital because the finger's in it, what's left of it. And it's an easier way to get to emergency. So if you don't wear a glove, then you'll learn to slide rope through your hand and be more in tune to your rope. And I don't, I don't like roping with a glove on, is what I'm trying to say. So that's another safety deal. All right, I think that pretty well covers it for now. Thank you.